Here we are with function transformations. So, we talked a lot about this stuff. Now let's see what we can do. We played around on the calculator to get an idea of what some of the things do. And remember, we're basing all of this off of this um, function here. Right? And we determined that the A, the H, and the K all affect our graphs in some way from that parent graph. Okay? So the K, remember, shifted it up or down. Positive was up, negative was down. Makes sense. The H shifted up left or right. And it was the opposite. So a plus H would move it left, a minus H would move it right. The reason for that, because that equation is a negative, it's a minus, so you have to think opposite. And the A did quite a few things, right? It stretched it, compressed it, and um, and remember stretched, making it wider, compressed, making it skinnier, or no, flip that around. Stretched makes it skinnier, compressed makes it wider, and it also could uh, reflect it across the x-axis. And if it reflected it across the y, it would have to be inside there. Okay. So let's take a look at some of these. So it says write a function that will create the following transformations. And we're kind of given four different functions, right? f of x, g of x, h of x, k of x. So it says shift f of x down three units. So we've got f of x equals x squared. And to shift it down, we just subtract 3, right? Simple enough with the up or down. So 2, shift h of x up 5 units. So here's h of x. So we'd go h of x equals absolute value of x. Now, it's already been shifted down 1 unit. So in order to get that up 5, wouldn't it be like minus 1 plus 5? But we can simplify that minus 1 and that plus 5 to just be a positive 4. Because it started, you know, thinking about the graph, it started one unit down, so to get up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is actually only moving at 4 from that parent graph. Okay? So sometimes you got to think about that, what's already happened to it. Okay, number 3, shift g of x down 7 units. g of x right here. So, is equal to x. Now it's already got a plus 2, so if we subtracted 7 from that, it would be a minus 5 overall to move it down. Now number 4, shift h of x right 4 units. Remember with the, the down and up is outside of what's going on. So, you know, like the absolute value is like the parentheses. Just the x. The x squared. You know, we could put parentheses around each of these x's. Okay, so when we go right or left, we have to be inside that parentheses. So we go h of x equals absolute value of x to the right four units. So it would be minus 4, because we do opposite, plus or minus 1, right? Because it's originally minus 1. There, now we've shifted it right. This minus 4 actually goes to the right. Because whenever it's in the parentheses, you think opposite. All right, now 5 reflects g of x across the y-axis. So remember, x and y. x is horizontal to shift g of x. You know, to take this one and shift it across the x-axis, it would have the a in front. So we need to put that a on the inside of the parentheses, which... With this one, because there's no square or anything, it's kind of just going to be that negative across. So it would be g of x equals negative x plus 2. And with uh, g of x, it's a linear equation. It looks basically like this. So shifting it over the x or the y, it's basically going to do it the same way, just because it's that line. Yeah. 
Oh no. The difference would be to reflect g of x across the x-axis because reflected off across the x would look like this, right? Reflected across the y would look like this. We'd flip it around at this point, whereas across the x around this point. So if you were to reflect this across the x-axis, it would look like this. And so that negative would affect the 2 as well. That's where we'd run into the that issue because it's a linear equation. Okay, h of x absolute across the x-axis. So for this one across the x, that negative 1 or just negative needs to be outside the absolute value. If it were the y-axis, it would be inside the absolute value. Okay? So there's those ones. Um, now, I hope you guys have been uh, doing, trying to do these problems before you watch the video. That way you can make sure to um, use this to check your answers. Okay, so the last four. Compress h of x vertically by one-third. So, basically, all we have to do, that's the a value, so you'd go h of x equals one-third absolute value of x minus one. To stretch g of x vertically by 4, we would go g of x equals 4x plus 2. Okay, just putting that a in front of the x. Um, reflect g of x across the y axis and shift up 6, so now we're doing two things at once. So, to reflect it across that y axis, We'd say g of x would equal, and that negative is going to apply to just the x. So it would be a negative x, then shift it up 6, we'd add 6 plus 8, because 2 plus 6 is 8. Then 10, vertically stretch k of x by 3 and shift it down 3, down 5, so k of x is that negative x, so it would be a negative 3, because that 3 is acting as the a, x, and then down 5 would be minus 5. There we go with those ones. Remember, once again, we're dealing with that basic format, okay? And all the shifts and all the compressions, reflections, all that are based off these ideas. Okay, now it says write the parent function for each equation, then explain how each function has been transformed from its parent function. Next, graph the function. Alright, so I'm not going to do the quadratic. Okay, I'm not going to do the absolute value. I think you guys can do those ones on your own. Okay, just remember, think about that a x minus h plus k. And so get rid of any of the pluses or minuses, and that should lead you, or the multiplying with a, that should lead you with the parent function. Okay, so like, I'll help you with at least the parent function. So f of x would equal x squared. We get rid of that 3. So what does that 3 do, it, do to it? Tell me what it does, and then use that to graph it. For 12, you go f of x equals absolute value of x. So how did that plus 2 transform it? And what would that look like as a graph? Now, if you have trouble graphing these because you don't have a graphing calculator at home and you're not sure what it's doing to it, okay, go online to this graphing calculator. Okay, If you're really struggling with some of these, okay, go online. You can graph both your functions and take a look at the graphs and see how they, they you know, are different. Okay, it's a really easy to use, an excellent tool to help you when you're talking about graphing. All right, let's take a look at 13. I'll help you guys out with this one. So, look at what ha is happening to x. Nothing. Okay, it's not squared, it's not square rooted, it's not cubed, it's not absolute valued, it's nothing. So that's going to be a linear function, so it's f of x equals x. That's our parent function. Okay. Our parent function basically looks like that. Okay, it's a 
basic graph of our parent function. So what's the transformation? Well, a couple of things. There's a negative, a one-half, and a minus eight. So we know it's going down eight. That negative means it's reflected. And the one-half means it's going to be a compression. Okay, and we actually didn't quite get to some of this stuff, so um, we'll, we'll cover some of this stuff in class as well. So, we're going to shift ours down 8 and reflect it. Reflecting it across the X would make it look like that. Okay, this would come down here, this would reflect up there. Okay, but we are also shifting it down 8 so that x-intercept would have to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and we're actually stretching it out by a half so where this one has a slope of down 1 to the right one ours is going to be down 1 to the right 2 so our graph, I'm going to do it in green we'll start right here, go down 1 to the right 2 down 1 to the right 2 and it would actually look more like this. So not quite as steep. Okay? Not quite as steep. So our graph would be that green one. Alright, number 14. f of x equals x plus 2 cubed minus 5. Okay, so it's got that cubed. So our parent function is a cubic. x cubed. Now, we've got the minus 5 on the outside. So that's down 5, plus 2 on the inside, so that's left, I think opposite, 2. Now the cubic looks like this. Okay, there's our basic cubic. So we're moving, think of this point, we're moving it down 5 to the left 2. So it would be right there and it's going to follow that same shape. Okay? So now, on these graphs, I'm not looking for the most accurate. Okay? I'm looking for the, if you can kind of just shift it from that parent graph. So, 15. There's another quadratic one. Okay? Um, I'll do this one. Sorry, my iPad is running out of batteries, and so I might have had a weird pause there. But this quadratic... Um, I'll do this one with you. So we got a lot going on here. So it's a quadratic, so our parent function is x squared. Okay, parent function looks basically like this. So we've got a negative in front, so we're going to reflect it across the x, right? Reflect over x-axis. Okay, you got to make sure you put which axis. Okay, we've got this one half. So it's going to actually make it be a little wider by about half. So kind of like this. Okay, so we call that a compression by a half. Okay, then we've got the plus 6 on the inside. So plus means we go left. So left 6. So the whole thing is going to be shifted to the left 6 and a minus 1 down one. So the vertex is going to be right there and it'll look something like that. So left and down one. Okay, so that's kind of a general idea of what's going on there. Now let's look at 16. We've got the absolute value here. So there's our parent function, absolute value, basically looks like a V. So what's happening? So it's got the three there. We call that a stretch by a third, by three, so it's making it skinnier. Then we're going to add two, so that's up two. So then we take that vertex there, move it up two, and do the same thing. It should look something like that. All right, so it says write the parent function for each equation, then explain how each function has been transformed from its parent function. So now they're not really giving you functions. They're giving you f of x and saying a new function h of x, but we did something to it. 
So we tr think of it again the same way. Okay. So h of x with an x minus 1. And the minus 1 is on the inside. So the parent function would be h of x. Okay. So then what's the transformation? Well, it's on the inside, so that's the h. moves it horizontally. And we do opposite, so write 1. We shifted it, and I guess I should say shifted it right one. Now on 18, I'm sure we can say h of x is our parent function. Now that minus 2x is on the inside, so that's going to reflect it over the y-axis, because it's inside the parentheses. And it's going to give it one of those stretches. got the plus 3 on the outside, so up 3. And there you guys go. So um, hopefully um, we can discuss this more next time and get a little bit more help and understanding on what's going on here.